What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Pace Studio here in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. We are broadcasting to you live from the Manhattan Center here on 34th Street, as always, and we are joined by a very special guest making a return appearance. Is Mr. Keith Harkin? Yeah. What's going on, man? Good, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Welcome back. We're glad to have you. My pleasure. Yeah, you know, so uh, you were here a few months ago, and at that time, we talked a lot about. Uh, there's this new live record you just put out. It's called In the Round. It came out in December, mm-hmm. and uh, we also talked about. The, the last solo album you put out, which is already, it's going to be a couple years old already. It's, uh, that one was called Our Mercy Street. Uh, and so, you know, that stuff has, has come out. And mm-hmm. I know you are now on tour and doing the doing thousand miles a day mm-hmm. out on the road writing new, new material. Uh, so we're going to hear a couple of new songs today from you. Uh, I think one cover song as well. Um, I want to ask about all this new music, but let's start it off with one first. Tell me a little bit about this first song. Uh, so I wrote this song in Ireland. I have a studio in Ireland and a buddy of mine, Cahar, who I've known a long time. Um, we're actually working on a different thing all together. It's called the Black Irish. It's like a punk rock Irish thing. And, you know, Cahar is a songwriter like myself, and we can write different genres. And somehow in the middle of writing punk rock, this, like, Americana thing slipped through the net, which we shouldn't have let happen, but we did. And, uh, yeah, it's a song we wrote just, just last year, and I'm going to throw it out there. It's called Call Me in the Morning. All right, cool. All right. Hoping you would understand, don't make me explain There's a million thoughts all at once running through my brain And I needed you More than you needed me too Yeah, the waves are crashing on the cliffs holding cold hands Saying goodbye, knowing I would never understand. Oh, and I needed you. Oh, then you needed me too. Yes, I needed you. She said, I call me in the morning. So I stayed away. It's just not all right Well, if you are free, right through me A bittersweet memory Oh, it's all right, it's okay It's always been this way Oh, and I needed you Oh, then you
Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so uh, you said you're writing some new songs these days uh, for something that sounds a little bit different. Um, is this something for coming down the road, you know, pretty soon? Or like, w what's the what's the bottom line with this this new project? Um, the bottom line, I don't think there is a bottom line for it. You know, um, I always try to put something out every year just to keep, you know, I want to give something to fans and keep them interested. And, um, but I've been writing like kind of constantly now since Mercy Street came out, which was like three years ago. Um, and I have done a Christmas record since then. I've done a live record since then. Um, but like I haven't done like an all new original record. Um, so I've been writing nonstop. I write so much. Um, and I've been writing with lots of different writers and writing on my own. Um, I write a lot with Jack Tempson, the Eagles songwriter. Yeah. Jack wrote Peaceful Easy Feeling and he wrote Already Gone and loads of hits with Glenn Fry. And so Jack and I write a lot. Um, so there's a bunch of tracks for the next record that Jack and I have written, songs with friends. And I'm really excited about it because, personally for me, my songwriting, I feel, has gotten somewhere. I don't know where it's gotten to, but it's gotten somewhere. And uh, it's the first time where, like, like I really want to play these songs. And I, Not that I don't want to play my other songs, but, like, I really want to play these ones. You know, and I want to get them out there. And I really want a good producer to take them and take them to the next level and... I'm just excited about the next bunch of songs. You know, I really am. Yeah. Do you? So I know you're on the road now, and you're on the road solo, like completely, not just as an act, solo, solo, solo. Solo like dirtbag. It's, it's you in a van <laughs> and and the road. Do you, do you get a lot of a writing done in that in that way? You know, you're out on your own. You're, you're driving hundreds of miles a day. Is there, do you feel, do you, do you find the inspiration out there to write songs? Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't get the time to write them, but the inspiration's there. Yeah. You know, um, I find myself like almost, do you know End of the Wild, the movie yeah, where yeah, the, yeah. the kid right. like takes away and do you know the part where he's in the van and he's like talking to himself? Yeah. I've caught myself doing that quite a lot recently and then I would like laugh like a crazy, like, you know, right. going kind of crazy. Like so far I've done like 8,000 miles and I left LA like at the start of the month and I've done 12 shows and I've another 10 to do. And I still have to get back to LA. Yeah, and you're gonna um, and you're driving the whole way. So yeah, like you're driving everything. from the West Coast all the way. You said you drove from California to Florida. Seattle. Yeah. LA to Seattle. Seattle back down the whole way to Florida. Now the whole way up the coast. And, and then, then eventually up, all the way back. I'm actually going to Toronto. I'm going up to Canada and then back into like Ohio and then I have to get back to LA. And this is a sleeper. So like basically you're out. You're out parking it. You know wherever you you know come in wherever you sort of pull in at night. And uh, so, you know, I mean, I was, I was wondering, like, you know, you're, you're just you find a place to park yourself and then you like batten down the hatches. I mean, you're on you're at like some, you know, truck stop in like Oklahoma. I mean, do you get a peaceful night of sleep at a truck stop in Oklahoma? Well, when you just drove 8000 miles and done 15 shows, yeah, you'll sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? I don't worry about it, man. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, that's, the, that's the path of my life and that's the way I've chosen, the way I want to live and I love challenges and most people, I know the way I'm doing this right now, most people, there's probably not many musicians in the world have done that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, that, and, they can, and I'll do that all year. This is my first tour this year. Yeah. And I'm going on the road May, June. I'm touring Ireland in June, the end of June. I'm on the road October, I'm on the road November, and then I'm on the road December as well. And is, is that all same kind of like just you and road, or are you, or is there more of a team involved? I in will later? bring one person with me for the rest of the year. Yeah. yeah, and is that is that is that a good thing for that person or a bad thing for that person? <laughs> no, it's a good thing. I mean, I, I when I'm on the road, I'm not the kind of musician that just sits there and like expects like the band to drive itself and everybody to load the gear. I like working. Yeah, you know, it's just the way I am. Yeah. Um. So I'll do as much driving as the you know unless they want to do it. Um, yeah. Depends. That's that's my side of it. See what the tour manager says about that. Yeah, right, that. exactly. <laughs> we'll call him later. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do a couple more. Uh, I know this next one is also uh, a new one. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about, about this next one. 
So I wrote this song. I was in London in end of January this year, and uh, I went and met up with my buddy, good friend Andy Wright. Um, and Andy produced On Mercy Street, uh, the record that I put out, my second album. And Andy's produced loads of big people. Like he's doing, he's done everybody from Pavarotti, do you name it? He's done all the pop acts. He's done every Mick Hucknall and Simply Red record and Only Mankind and Eurythmics and stuff like that. So he was like, he's a big time producer and a dear friend of mine. And we got together in January, but we hadn't seen each other in like four years. And I will say that we did get really drunk in the studio, which I, it isn't normally my style. I've never done that before, actually, in my whole life. I've never got drunk and written songs, but we got really drunk. And I knew we kind of wrote something, and then Andy sent it to me like two days later, and I was like, shit, that's really good. That's actually a good song. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to play it for you now. It's about a cowboy who wears nothing but leather pants all the time. That sounds yeah. great. <laughs> it's called, uh, what is it called? Last Man Standing. And I normally play this with like a looping pedal and BVs and stuff. But I just realized that... Uh, I haven't got any of that, so I'm going to have to do a bit of improvisation. You said I'm the man who saved your world So tell me why you don't want me no more Used to think that you would tell me the truth I'm not made of stone, can't take this abuse Oh, dance with me, baby, all over this floor Dance with me, baby, just once more Don't tell me you're lonely, I can help you with it Everyone's lonely, just give me your kiss I'll be the last man standing with my rivals down I'll be the last cowboy hiding out in town I'll be a desperado on the run I'll be your only man Yes, I'll be your only man I'll be your only Head to toe and leather playing with your mind He was looking at me and I was looking at you There was me thinking I'm just passing through Oh, dance with me, baby, all over this floor Dance with me, baby, till we walk out that door don't tell me you're lonely Cause I can help you with this Everyone's lonely Just give me your kiss I'll be the last man Standing with my rivals down I'll be the last cowboy Hiding out in town I'll be a desperado On the run I'll be your only man Yes, I'll be your only man Yes, I'll be your only man I'll be your only one Ooh, I'll be your only one Ooh, I'll be your only one You said I'm the man who saved your world So tell me why you don't love me no more I used to think you would tell me the truth I'm not made of stone, can't take this abuse I'll be the last man standing with my rivals down I'll be the last cowboy hiding out in town I'll be a desperado on the run I'll be your only man Yes, I'll be your only man I'll be your only man I will 
I'll be your only one. I'll be your only one. I'll be your only one. I will. I'll be your only one. <laughs> thank you. Keith, thank you. My pleasure. That sounds like a song to me, to my ears, that oh, someone might write while driving across the prairie land here in the United <laughs> States. Maybe not in your case, but it sounds like, you know, a cowboy, American cowboy song. And I was wondering as I was as I was listening to it, you know, you're driving you're driving thousands of miles across this country. You've done it before, mm -hmm. I presume. Um, you know, is there still, you know, do you drive across this country and still see things that awe you and, and you know, pop your eyes out? Or is it, at this point it's like you just got your, your eyes on the dotted line and stay focused? No, I, I don't take any of it for granted, man. I mean, I grew up in Derry City in Northern Ireland where, you know, music's massive. It's kind of like all the people had. You know, there's a lot of trouble and stuff there, and music was something that all young people had. There was a massive punk scene back in the day when that started, and... You know, I look at, like, my pop was a musician back home, and there were so many guys like my dad who were awesome musicians, but they just had, there was nowhere for them to go. Like, they couldn't think. They, they were trained to think differently as opposed to, I was lucky enough to have parents and chances in life that let me do this. I mean, I'm a musician. I'm living, like, the American dream. I'm an Irish guy coming to America. I'm, you know, I've been here for over 10 years, and... I've done four records and I'm driving. Like, I know it does get tiring, yes. I, I understand like what you're asking, but for me, it doesn't. Like, it, days it does, but the most of the time I do still pinch myself and I always think, you know, remember it could be your last. Yeah. You know, if it was the last time uh, you already see, I think we take everything for granted. You know, when I'm older, I'll look back at this and go, shit, I actually done that. Yeah. You know, and there's not many people I know that done that. And I'm going to say I done that. I think when you're driving across, you know, a country this big with as much as there is to see in it also, you get regular reminders of how much you take for granted because there's so much day to day. I'm sure you're seeing just like, you know, it's mountains, it's lakes, it's forests, it's concrete, blue sky, cities. I mean, you know, there must be so much to sort of fill up your brain as you're as you're going along. I mean, can you can you write a song and drive a car at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. I do sometimes. Yeah. You know, I might hear something or see something I'm like, oh, like trying to like sing it, yeah, right. Stop it, and think, like sing the so next So are you line. like a are you like a books on tape guy? You listen to the radio? What yeah, you I listen to lots on? of podcasts and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, um, I try. Believe it or not, I try not to listen to music too much because I find I torture myself and like I, I'll, you because before you realize it, you've listened to the same album four times and you're like oh, that's like the fourth time I've listened to that and you start like rewriting parts in your brain and then I get out of the van and I have to do a whole show. Yeah, so right. So I want to keep my brain fresh for the music side of it and uh Thank God for podcasts. Thank yeah. God for podcasts. Like, I listen to Joe Rogan quite a bit, and those, I, I kind of listen to the podcasts that are, like, about stem cells and government and conspiracy, like, just things that are, aren't really what my, my brain's used to thinking about, you know? Right, so you're looking up at the sky at, like, the chemtrails, wondering, yeah. like, how it's <laughs> seeping down into your brain. All the time. Yeah, all yeah, the time. All the time. So, uh, I know we're going we're gonna to do one more today, and uh, this one, I think, is a cover song, yeah? Yeah, um, I'm going to talk and tune at the same time. All right. This is a song by a guy called Tyler Childers. Has he been in here? A guy with like so. ginger, ginger hair. Yeah, I remember all the gingers. <laughs> we were talking about this a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I yeah. Remember Curtains that conversation. and drapes. Yeah. But I think he's from uh, Tennessee, or somewhere. Someone told me last night Tennessee. But like, I'm I'm the worst person at listening to the new music because like I don't I hate to say it I don't I don't like a whole lot of it. You know I just. I think too many people are like chasing like the next best thing and I think there's something to be said about just writing what you're good at and what, you know, what's normal to you. And I, I heard this guy's music and, and every song's like about moonshine and cocaine and benefits and the dog shot his mom and the mom shot the cat and I was like going, I was like, this guy's good. I was like, I haven't heard anybody write this kind of stuff in a while. And so much so that I bit, and I rarely bite, and I was like, all right, you've got me. And then I seen like a picture of the guy, and I was like, nah, this guy is the real deal. You just need to be looking at him. And he wrote this song called uh, Feathered Indians. And I, 
I liked it so much that I came home one night drunk and made my wife listen to it like 12 times in bed. And amazingly, that was not the end of the story. And that wasn't. <laughs> but it's, and uh, she kicked me out. And then uh, I decided to learn it and play it this tour. And I just love the, the lyrics. The guy just writes really cool lyrics, you know. His new album out called Purgatory and Sturgill Simpson produced the record. And yeah. It's a good record, so check it out. And I, he's, he's playing soon enough nearby me. I'd love, I'd love to play music with the guy. Uh, so here you go. This is a song called Feathered Indians. Cool. On the inside of her thigh There are the little feathered engines Where we tussled through the night Had I known she was religious Then I wouldn't have came stoned To the house of such an angel Too fucked up to get back home Virginia, smoking spirits on a roof. She asked, has anybody told you that them things are bad for you? I said, many folks have warned me. There have been several people tried, but up till now there ain't been nothing I could ever leave behind. Hold me close, my Sing your whispering songs Softly in my ear I will sing it long Honey, tell me that your love runs true And how I can always count on you Be there when the bullets fly I would run across the river just to hold you I go careless through the thorns Just to hold her for one minute Though it leave me one more Hold me close, my dear Sing your whispering songs Softly in my ear and I will sing along Honey, tell me that your love runs true And how I can always count on you Be there when the bullets fly I would run across the river just to hold you tonight Thanks very much, man. My that is, that's a great song. You play it really well. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the advertisement. You know, you, this is this is the beginning of the of the collaboration. You and Tyler, <laughs> right here. Yeah. yeah. KeithHarkin.com. Yeah, that's right. KeithHarkin.com. This is gonna like on the behind the music. It's gonna be like, and then Keith played the Pace Studio, and that was the beginning. You know, I saw <laughs> Keith on Pace Studio, and I knew we had to work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, I'm all about it. <laughs> um, so everybody, obviously, this is Keith Harkin. Uh, dude, thanks for coming back and, and playing in our studio again. Uh, this guy's on tour right now, as always. Uh, so there's a show tonight coming up at the Rockwood Music Hall here in New York City. Uh, you're going up the East Coast, up to Canada. 
Yep. And then out to the Midwest, I know there are a lot of people waiting for you in Akron, as I yep. can see uh, from the comments rolling in on this uh, on this go. performance. And then back out to Cali, which is where, where you live. I, I don't think we mentioned that at any point, yep. but you're a Southern Californian at this yep. point, looking the part. Yeah, um, you know. try my best. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, go to KeithHarkin.com, uh, find out all these dates, uh, catch them along the road. Maybe it'll give you a ride for a couple miles. Yeah, you know, yeah. it sounds like you could use a little company every now and again. Yeah, I'm going to put an ad out on Craigslist, I think. Yeah, right. If you yeah. see this van, yeah. flag me down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or don't. <laughs> Um, right, so we heard a couple of new songs and are excited for what those are going to turn into. Uh, in the meantime, there was a live album came out in December. It's called In the Round. Uh, last solo album came out 2016. It's called On Mercy Street. Uh, those are great records, and everyone should go pick them up. Uh, and go catch Keith tonight in New York. Um, Keith Harkin, man, thank you again. Thank you very much, Keith. Stopping guys. by uh, the Pace Studio. And when you're circling back around these parts again, you, you always got a stool here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you again. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. All right.